welcome back to Gadgets and Gear. I'm finally back with another video and today we will be taking a look at a 2020 MacBook Air. This 2020 MacBook Air is the last generation to feature an Intel-based system. This particular MacBook is rocking, or rather, fumbling about with the 10th generation Intel Core i3 which boasts a lovely 1.1 gigahertz of base clock speed. This is definitely on the lower side for clock speeds in a laptop processor. Not gonna do any races here, but it does still chug along, doing what it needs to do to keep on moving. Being Intel based, it also uses Intel graphics. So this MacBook packs the Intel Iris G4 integrated graphics. This is one of Intel's mid-tier integrated graphics solutions, and compared to other laptops that are running low to mid-tier HD or UHD level graphics, this Intel Iris will usually pull ahead. This iGPU will provide enough power for about every task you would expect a laptop like this to perform. Light to medium duty work such as web browsing, photo editing, office applications, document editing and processing, and similar tasks should be no problem for this Intel Iris Plus. Even some light video editing with 1080p footage should run fine. As far as graphics go, this is a compact, ultra portable laptop, and it's more than enough for most people's needs. This particular Mac is operating on 8GB of LPDDR4 RAM, which is fast enough for most light to some medium workloads depending on the performance requirements of the particular application that you are using, of course. 8GB can be easy to use up, especially since this is just standard memory, not Apple's unified memory, but it's still enough to run, I'd say, most standard laptop tasks with no big issues whatsoever. If you do a lot of editing, especially video, any half-serious gaming, or use creative software like 3D modeling or CNC-type machine software, I would highly suggest opting for the higher 16 gigabyte RAM option. Here, Apple really starts to shine with their own engineering now showing through, and why MacBooks are often so highly praised. The screen used in this Air is Apple's fantastic 13.3 inch Retina display. It is LED backlit with IPS technology. Showing off with a pixel density of 225, 60 by 1600, and 1400 nits of brightness. The sRGB screen colors are fantastic and more than enough pixels to make anything show on it a joy to watch. Installed are wide stereo speakers, one on each side of the machine looking right at you. Dolby Atmos is supported, and these are truly amazing speakers for a laptop and beat just about every other laptop, falling short of the newer Apple MacBook offerings. MacBooks are known for amazing audio, and this one is no exception. Apple advertises a 3 mic array, with omnidirectional beam forming, Basically, they're a fancy word for how the mics can isolate the voice and try to ignore background noises. The mics do sound pretty good, very serviceable, and I don't think you should have any complaints if you're using this for video calls or stuff like that. Unfortunately, we only see a 720p webcam here. While in good lighting, it is not the worst 720p I've seen, but it, it does leave something to be desired. The build quality is standard Apple magic. The chassis is made out of rigid but lightweight aluminum, which weighs in at a 2.8 pounds, or at about 1.29 kilograms. I'll throw the dimensions on screen here. Now the hinge is undoubtedly one of the best I've ever felt. It has a very smooth, firm feel to it, without requiring much force to move it. This allows for one-handed opening, and this laptop feels amazing to handle. It's a very high quality feeling product.
Mm. Apple's backlit Magic Keyboard feels nice to type on, although I have heard some say that they have a higher impact feel, which can cause fatigue after long periods of typing. They have somewhat shallow key presses and are not mushy feeling. I like them, and from my typing experience, I had no issues personally. The much praised Apple Trackpad is a dream to use. I personally think that Apple makes the best trackpads on the market. The trackpad is larger than a lot of other laptops, with an even activation pressure across the whole entire touchpad and satisfying pressure sensitive tactile clicks. This trackpad will definitely provide a very smooth and polished experience for the user. still have only USB-C ports like you have on MacBook since the release of the 12-inch MacBook in 2015. You get two C ports on the left side and one 3.5mm auxiliary jack on the right. That's all she wrote in terms of port selection. In the wireless department, we'll see Mr. Mac rocking Bluetooth 5.0. Thank you for watching. If you found any of this information helpful or even just entertaining, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel out way more than you know. I'll see you in my next one.